Welcome to Marty's Garden, a place where you can learn how to grow fresh food, organic food, sustainably in your backyard. G'day my friends, Marty Ware here. And I've got another cool video for you to do with worm farming and worm castings and all that cool, cool stuff to do with organic gardening. Because Kevin Stanton, a subscriber, wrote to me and wanted to know if you can grow in 100% worm castings. Well, Kevin, I want to let you know you can grow in 100% worm castings. And it's probably one of the only manures, because it actually is a manure, because it passes through the gut and comes out through the intestine and then out through that end that we all know. It becomes what they call the casting, which is basically a worm poo. Now, because it comes out neutral and it comes out covered in a mucous membrane sac, what it does is it's full of those like enzymes and microbes and little fungies and all that type of stuff. And they're actually designed to protect the roots of plants. So when other not, naughty, nasty start coming in and want to attack the roots of your plants, guess what? Those little fellas will protect them like no tomorrow. And they're also a slow release fertilizer. How cool is that? Nature's first slow release fertilizer on the planet created by the creator. So you just gotta love that, man. Worm castings are awesome. And what I wanna do is I wanna grow some and show you, Kevin, and the rest of the crew out there that it can 100% be done. It's probably a little bit overkill, but if you've got a lot of worm castings, then I recommend that you give it a try just for a bit of fun and you'll see the results. They really do love growing in this medium. However, like I said, you're probably a little bit overkill. You need to mix it in with some other stuff. But for this experiment, what we're going to do is we're going to grow it in 100% worm castings. So let's get into it, shall we? So here we have everything ready for the experiment. Down here, we have rocket seed. Over here, these are giant red mustard seeds that I grew last season, and that should be pretty viable. And the rocket's in very good condition also. We've got a whole bucket here. It's nearly 10 litres of worm castings. Now, sifted worm castings, and as you can see here from my hand, they are like, they're just like spongy. You can move them around. They're not too dry. I've been drying them out in the garage for about three or four months now, but they're not too dry. And this weighs 4.3 kilos. So I brought out my scales here. This is really heavy, man. Oh. Let's just have a look and see. I'll show you. Oop, the microphone just bumped on the thing there. 4.136, if you can see that. It's like I said, it's really heavy, and there's about nine liters in there at the moment. You can see this little plant, this is a red chard, which is growing currently in peat moss and micro, well, I was gonna say microgreens because they are a microgreen, but I'm gonna grow these right through. These are gonna be my plants for the autumn, for edible, and look how beautiful and healthy those stems are, and red, how beautiful the color is for this red chard. So it's growing in peat moss and worm castings. So that's pretty much it. So we've got nearly everything ready to go here. We've got a couple of pots filled into here, and these pots aren't very small, but they're perfect for our little microgreens test. And then we'll probably grow them through um, to baby leaf. Just rocket sometimes like to have a longer root, but I think they'll be all right in this. And we'll just see how, how they go, and we'll keep an eye on that over time. So let's get the seed down here and sprinkle some in and get them on their way. So what I've done is, because I'm in my studio and I don't want to make a mess, I've used this pretty pink box here. Yeah, it's nice and colourful, it even matches this bowl down here in my little terracotta pots and I've got my little hand spray bottle here. So what I'm going to do first is put in this seed. This is the giant red mustard seed and I grew this last season. So I'm probably going to put in about oh, 40 to 50 seeds in here. And then over to this one. So the rocket, it's a different coloured seed. We'll just get the camera over a bit more and sprinkle it around. It's really just a two or three little sprinkles. I always put a bit more, as long as you've got a nice good airflow from microgreens, they won't go mouldy. I'm just going to put, looking at that, I want to put a little bit more of the mustard, the giant red mustards in. 
Now it's, the weather's cooling down here, so these are great in the winter, autumn and spring. They'll even grow right through the summer months, the red mustard. They're a very tough plant, but they prefer the cooler weather and they go a better red colour when it's cooler. So we've got quite a bit here. I'm just going to mix them around. I'll just move this bottle out a little bit. Just mix them around a little bit there because when you're growing microgreens, it's a good idea to put like a, a little cover over the top, any type of seed. Uh, Vermiculite's really, very good for that. It's very light and fluffy. And this stuff, it just feels like, doesn't feel like soil. It's just feels so fluffy and just light and just beautiful to work with. And so I'm stoked to be doing this little experiment here. So I haven't wet them down because Look, worm castings hold a lot of moisture, even though they're dried out, there's still going to be moisture in there. So I'm just going to spray these guys down here, just to get the seed wet. I'm trying to wet my other seed. And the rocket should be up in like a couple of days. It comes up really fast, and so does the, the mustard comes up probably a couple of days later. But it can come up quite quick sometimes as well, being very fresh seed. I'd say it's very highly likely. So I'm going to get back to you once these guys come up and show you the progress. So there we go, I've got the red mustard here, the giant red mustard, and then I've got my rocket here. Now the rocket comes up a bit quicker, so these are about six to seven days old now, and so these had a close to five days growth. They're up in the second day. These, day, these guys were up in about day three, and what happened was I dropped the pot, they fell off the worm farm, and I got the shits, and I put it into the, I just threw the whole lot in the worm farm, and then they all just stayed in there and shot back up, and I thought, hmm, I better keep going in this experiment, and I will repot them back up in the 100% worm castings. And look, they're, they're doing really well, I'm really happy with them. And these have got the most, look, I won't eat at the side there, just going to chew on it like a little dinosaur. Uh, so anyway, these are really, really great. And what I decided to do was travel on with the experiment, or carry on with the experiment with some other things. I wanted to show you how you could strike some plants, such as mints and things, in water with worm castings. So have a look at this. Now this little plant you can see here is a chocolate mint. And I just love this little plant. It strikes easily in water. And what I wanted to do was test it and see how well it grew in water and 100% worm castings. And just look at the root growth after about three weeks. It's just amazing. And there's this little plant also coming up out of the top underneath the water. And I believe it would grow in here for quite some time. To take things a little bit further, I've got these little basil plants which I actually save from the garden out in the windrows where my other worms are. And I wanted to see how well they would grow in the castings as well. So we've added these to the experiment. And they're very young, so it would be interesting to see how well they perform coming into the cooler months here in Australia. I've also added to the experiment a tomato plant. Now I found this out in the garden growing in the compost and I thought, hmm, let's put him in there as well. So growing in 100% casting is just like everything, straight from my worm farms. And we'll see how well this guy grows over time as well. Now it's coming into, well it's autumn now and we're going to go into winter, but they grow fairly well here because I live in a subtropical area. So we'll just see if the weather stays nice and warm, these guys will keep growing on. So there you go, Kevin Stanton. You definitely can grow in 100% worm castings. However, I believe your worm castings can go much further if you use them around about 10 to 15% in your pots. Keep them around the root zone, in the potted plants, and also in the garden because they protect your roots from nematodes. They actually have like a watering system where they store water like a water crystal and they're a slow release fertilizer and they also have all the microbes and things around them which the beneficial roots and everything needs to survive and produce great great beautiful tasting food so if you're into organics worm farming definitely is the way to go and i've got lots more videos on worm farming and composting and all that cool stuff for growing fresh food at home in your space in your urban backyard so if you haven't seen any of my videos i've got a few more videos here and here i've got a subscribe button here 
And look guys, if you haven't been watching my channel and you want to learn more about growing fresh food at home, subscribe now before you head off. And I'll see you at the next video real soon. Bye for now.